a wreath. I have been buying and finishing off my Affinity God collection. And so I thought, why not look at some of Affinity Gods? And naturally, I was inclined to read the one fill-in issue that is also the worst issue of the series. This is Alan Watson and the Affinity Guard, issue 36. And it is actually a Doctor Strange fill-in issue written by the Doctor Strange editor that they ran instead as an issue of Affinity Guards. And it is a fucking insult to the reader. This is a Doctor Strange story. There is nothing in this that is complimentary or even engaging about the depiction of the Affinity Guards. If you ran this as an issue of Doctor Strange, nobody would feel desire to check out the Affinity Guards series based on their appearance in this. As an issue of Affinity Guards, it is mean and nasty. Basically, it is just the members of the title team all job to Doctor Strange. And obviously, I recognise I need to explain why Doctor Strange looks like a spawn knockoff. I have alluded to before that my most despised comic in existence is Faust's Love of the Damned. People might think I'm being a bit flippant or exaggeratory for effect, but no, I genuinely think Faust's Love of the Damned is a disgusting piece of shit. Much like the current state of Sewage Dragon, I cannot show much of why, because I would get banned on YouTube. Don't get me wrong, there is a market for sexual content, obviously. But Faust, Love of the Damned, is vile. It isn't a comic, it isn't sexy. It is the type of thing where you feel dirty, haven't even seen the merest bit of it. Faust, Love of the Damned, is puerile trash for perverts who can pretend they read it for the edgy story rather than the sexual violence and deplorable smut. I also expect people to say that I am a prude or that I don't get it. But Faust, Love of the Damned, is disgusting. The people who create it should be pariahs. They are, at best, absolute idiots, and at worst, loathsome pieces of shit. Now, outside of the content of Faust, Love of the Damned, we also have the fact that in 30 years, they have managed to publish 15 issues. This eight-filled evil comic, it has only managed 15 issues in 30 years. Part of this is because nobody wants to print it. And the other part is because it's made by scumbags who don't care. How does this link to Doctor Strange? Well, this Spawn rip-off Doctor Strange shit was... ...by the writer of Faust, Love of the Damned. The writer of an immature, pathetic comic that's only notoriety was that it was so lewd and unpleasant... He got handed Doctor Strange. The same writer who could only manage to finish 15 issues in a total of 30 years. And him Doctor Strange 
Sure, why not? The first two issues of Faust sure looked promising. The writer of Faust does not deserve anything but a punch in the face. Even if the editor of Doctor Strange is a complete moron or a degenerate pervert who loves Faust, love of the damned. The last thing that any Marvel editor should ever think is this sicko rapist freak would be a good fit for Doctor Strange. Immediately, and I do mean immediately, Doctor Strange was retooled into a Spawn ripoff. Or rather, should we say, a Faust ripoff. The plots were nonsensical, they were convoluted, and again, contained a lot of unpleasant shit, albeit obviously watered down. They are horrendous Doctor Strange stories, even without the context that it is written by a dirtbag with no talent and no right to ever be allowed into the professional field of comic books. Yeah, Faust is fucking horrific, and I do not... I hate that by even mentioning it. One person could go and look at it. They want to see what all the fuss is about. Don't. It's evil. It is actual filth. Do not for a second even consider that I am overreacting or exaggerating. It's absolutely... Think of the worst, most obscene, most wretched, slimy, sleazy, dry semen smelling excuse for a comic from the late 80s and early 90s. It's that. It's horrible. It's embarrassing. Right, so this isn't actually Doctor Strange. I am not going to explain it much because it is stupid rubbish. But this is a magical construct that is, and also isn't, Doctor Strange. He has come to steal the Affinity Gems from the Affinity Guard because he wants to use them to give himself independence and true existence. He doesn't want to be a construct created by Doctor Strange. He wants to properly live. He steals Warwick Davis's gem straight away. And I will quickly explain the Affinity Guard. At the end of Affinity Gauntlets, Alan Watson got the Affinity Gauntlets with all six Affinity Gems, but he decided he wasn't fit to wield the power and that no one was. So instead, he split the gems up again and gave each to others to be protected. We see them here. Dax, he got the power gem. The beautiful, bald lady, Moon Garden, she got the mind gem. Alan Watson kept his original soul gem. Palindrome the one that you don't recognise. He didn't have a gem, but for the sake of it, let's say he has the reality gem, rather than explain that Fanius has that one. And lastly, Gonorrhea had the time gem. On oh, Warwick Davis, he had the space gem. Each of the gems allow total mastery over that aspect of life. No, I wouldn't really describe it as life. The universe. Well, for example, Moon Garden, uh, mental capabilities are only increased dramatically when she has the mind gem. Likewise, Dax's 
strength is increased by the power gem. Warwick Davis with the space gem allows him to instantaneously teleport anywhere with ease. The others are a bit more abstract, but work in similar ways. And now, Dr. Spawn wants them. And things start off semi-encouraging, with Gonorrhea putting up a fight. She is meant to be the deadliest woman in the galaxy, after all. Let me also say, Affinity Guard, the series, Alan Watson and the Affinity Guard... As his moments. Want a good gonorrhea story? Issue 14. I would prefer to read that than this one. The two-parter with Dax and Hulk. Issues 12 and 13. They are amazing. There's an origin issue somewhere in there. Not a bad primer. Even after Jim Starman left. It went downhill, but the two-parter with Anz Molman and Tyrannomon, issues 34 and 35, the issues that precede this filling, they are quite good and fun. To me, and to others, but not to everyone, Affinity Guard are an appealing team. They are a good, sensible set of characters to group together. And I am saying that regardless of Moon Garden's involvement. I also need to repeat that this isn't written by the guy who did Faust. This is the editor who brought him into Marvel. Not remotely equally as bad, but... Still a poor writer with a crap Doctor Strange fill-in that ran in another title. Presumably just to get around the rules against writer-editors. And this is actually terrible anyway. Gonorrhea is defeated and Doctor Strange steals a gem. One thing you might spot is... A lot of rewriting going on. A lot of the writing has been last minute swapped out. You can tell by the sudden change in typeset or formatting. Anyway, Moon Garden is defeated and Doctor Strange steals her gem. And Palindrome, who doesn't even have a gem... He's defeated as well. And then Dax is defeated. And all of this is happening as fast as possible. In terms of actual fight, Dax gets two panels, for example. These characters, the Affinity Gods, they are meant to be among the most powerful heroes in the universe due to their gems. And finally, we have Alan Watson, the leader of the team. And I will say, the artist, the artist did a lot of covers for the UK reprints of the Marvel comics in the late 90s. Including the first comic I ever had ever, Astonishing Spider-Man 39. By Panini Comics. I have been thinking about tracking down the Age of Armageddon ones because they have free posters and new covers, and look, Squealy is on that one. I would have thought this is a shit story, but I would have thought this is the point where Alan Watson he isn't easily defeated. This is where we have actual conflict. We have a fight. It would be very unsatisfying and demeaning to the rest of the team. But this is where the story has to go, surely. But no, pretty much defeated straight away as well. 
Some more intense rewriting on this page. There is something else I want to talk about. Something else I want to bring up. And that is that the editor of this. Not the writer of it. Not the editor of Doctor Strange. The editor of Alan Watson and the Affinity Guards. The same editor as Affinity Gauntlet and Silver Surfman. And all the 90s Jim Starman comics. He hasn't a fucking clue. He doesn't understand any of these stories he's editing. The conclusion to this issue is stupid because Doctor Strange, the real Doctor Strange, already knows that the Affinity Gems cannot work in unison anymore. And this construct has all of Doctor Strange's mystical knowledge and memories but conveniently forgot one of the few things that Doctor Strange knew about the Affinity Gems. Absolute garbage story. And the letters page has that editor respond to letters and again demonstrate that he doesn't understand the stories by offering answers incorrectly explaining the ending of Affinity Cluedo. Little insert here. This is the artist's only credit for a mainline Marvel book, and there's a lot of 90s-ness to it, but I don't think a single fill-in issue of Doctor Strange is enough to judge. Nice shot of the team here. I don't recommend this, even to my enemies, of whom there are many. I reckon my nemesis wouldn't enjoy this. He wouldn't understand it, or even recognise a single character. Actually, hold on, let us, uh, yeah, doesn't have a pun title, you wouldn't get anything out of this. I would tear this up, but I think much of the hatred is coming from the circumstances and backstory of what we have here. I have no ill will towards the artist, if anything, the officer, and even the basic plot. It could have been written less aggressively shit. Not ripping it up, but I'm not offering any conclusion besides it is shit and getting seven thumbs up.